Hi, it is Thursday, the 7th of January, and I am continuing to read and wonder my way through Luke's Gospel. Today it's Luke chapter 6, verses 37 through 49. Originally I thought I would divide this into two bits and have a little bit more to do tomorrow, um, but I feel this actually all fits together, so I, I want to <clears throat> finish it up. Uh, so, you may recall that Jesus um, appointed uh, apostles, 12 apostles, from, uh, from the disciples, from those who were following him. He then went on to tell us that the poor were blessed, but woe to those who are rich. Um, and also told us that we should love those who, who hate us. Um, I mean, everybody loves people who love them. Uh, what credit is that? But you should also love the people who curse you. And uh, we wondered about that yesterday. Um, and then Jesus is still speaking, and that's where we pick it up. So, Luke chapter 6, verses 37 through 49. As I said, Jesus is still speaking. And he says, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. He also told them a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is qualified will be like the teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? How can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take out the speck in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me. Here's my words and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on a rock. And when a flood arose, the river burst against the house, but could not shake it, because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. And when the river burst against it, immediately it fell, and great was the ruin of that house. <sighs> so many things that I wonder about. I mean, it seems obvious up front, right? Uh, be a good person, good things will happen to you. Um, don't be a bad person, because then bad things happen. Yeah, sort of. There is kind of a simple uh, karma way of seeing this. Um, do good things, good things come back to you. I, I, I got that. But I think there's something deeper in, in what Jesus is saying here. Uh, and, and, and lots of things for us to, to wonder about. Um, it, it opens, at least I this reading opened with, you know, do not judge and you will not be judged. And I don't think that Jesus is saying that we shouldn't discern. Right? I mean, you and I, we judge what food is healthy to give our children. Uh, we judge who our friends are going to be based on their character and the way that we connect. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with being discerning. But here I think that judgment is tied with condemnation. Note, do not judge, you will not be judged. Do not condemn, you will not be condemned. Um, there's this idea of uh, judgment and condemnation dividing the world into the good guys and the bad guys. Um, the right and the wrong. Uh, I think that Jesus is um, in, in imploring us to resist that kind of binary temptation who created us and them. Um, and, and, and the thing is, what Jesus is telling us, it, 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 to me anyway, I, I love the line, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. There is the potential, Jesus says, for such abundance. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. This is a good thing to have. This is, this is abundance. This is, this is a joyful abundance. And it is available to you. Available to everybody. And you go, well, great, then how do we get that? Well, you get that 
by by giving that by being by being generous and considerate yes you do that not because um, not because it's the mystical secret you give it to the universe it comes back uh, to you twofold um, it's it's not that it's that that's how we create society that's how we create a beloved community where we actually love each other so we don't judge and we do not condemn uh, we help and we assist absolutely um, as it says here can a blind person guide a blind person uh, will not both fall into a pit when we are judging um, we end up becoming like that that we judge we say well if we're judging you're not you're not worthy you're not good um, whatever that thing is that, that, that has um, separated you out uh, we basically said you don't belong but in doing that we prove that we are exactly the same we, we, we also don't have a full vision of, of community we are not loving fully because we are we are condemning so so we become the blind as well I don't want to turn this into sort of that that, that dr. Phil uh, moment uh, but but there there is this this idea that that uh, when we divide the world into good guys and bad guys, um, we scapegoat the bad guys, uh, which isn't to say that they're that they're okay and we should just stop you know blaming them. Um, but when we put all the blame on them, um, then we remove ourselves from any sense of responsibility for community building. We look around and say, yeah, things are bad, but it's all his fault, not my fault. It's nothing I can do. It's his fault. If we would get rid of him, we get rid of her. If we get rid of them then everything will be great. By the way, all the time realizing we'll never get rid of them. Therefore, we never actually have to aspire to that greatness. We never actually have to take any responsibility for it ourselves. Yes, we could be a loving, a, a wonderful loving community if it weren't for those racists over there. So, we put it all on them. The only reason things aren't going well here is because of those folk. And in doing that, we condemn ourselves to falling into pits again and again and again. We don't take any responsibility. We don't ask ourselves, okay, so what can I do? How can I be the one of vision who helps lead that person who is blind? That racist person, that whatever you want to do that has, has pushed them out of, uh, out of favor. Uh, how can I help them be part of the bigger vision? What can I offer them? When I do that, we have the chance of becoming the community we mean to be. But when I just scapegoat them, then I get to sit back smugly and say, see, they're horrible people. Jesus says, you know, you're, you're so fixated on, on that speck in their eye, you don't see the log in your own. Well, I don't know that it necessarily has to be that they have a tiny problem and I have a large problem. Um, but the thing is that when I'm focused on whatever's in their eye, I have no concept that there is also something in mine. Uh, and Jesus wants me to be aware that there is stuff in mine. I, I'm of that age um, <clears throat> and growing up in, in North America, I, 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 I dined out on my, on my Dirty Harry movies and all my Vengeance movies. You know, all those great movies, uh, all those great stories where, where the bad bullies were beaten by a good bully. And we love the good bully because the good bully beat up the bad bully. But Jesus reminds me, or Luke reminds me that Jesus said, no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. So even if you're a good bully, you're still a bully. Mm, really? Yeah. Um... The good person out of the good treasure of their heart produces good. The evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. You need to listen to what people say. You need to listen to what you're saying. You have to ask yourself what it is that you're doing, how you're doing it, why you're doing it. Um, because <clears throat> those bad guys sure as heck deserve it. But if what I am growing out of my tree is violence and anger and hatred, even though I've convinced myself that those people deserve it, I am still now a tree that grows anger and hatred and violence. And that, that's, 
That's not the tree that I want to be. That's not a good tree. No good tree bears bad fruit. But so often we take our bad fruit, we say, yeah, but we needed the bad fruit because those trees over there are so horrible. Oh, Jesus does make this difficult. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? And I'll show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. Right? So Jesus is saying, like, you, 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 you say I am Lord. You, you, you want to follow me. Um, you praise me, you know, but you're not actually listening to me. Because the one who listens to me it, it actually lives the way that I live and, 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 and does the things that I am asking you to do, builds their house on a strong foundation. So when the floods come, when the difficult times come, it will stand and you will survive. But when you just call me Lord, Lord, use my word, use my name, but don't actually follow what I say, then when the storm comes, you're going to be washed away because you have no foundation. You have no connection to God. You have nothing to give you comfort and, and, and inspiration. I'm adding words, but that to me is what Jesus is saying here. And so, and, and I'm aware that um, some of you are listening to this um, on uh, January 7th. Some of you will be listening to this in a podcast two weeks later. Um, but just for context, yesterday on January the 6th, like much of the world, uh, I was watching um, as the capital uh, in, in, in the United States, uh, in, in Washington, D.C., uh, was overrun by an angry mob and, and, and people died and, um, and, and, and horrific violence uh, and, and hatred and anger. Um, and I watched and I had no sympathy for the mob. I am angry at the mob. Um, and uh, as I'm watching, I see, and many of us saw it, this Jesus saves sign just being waved uh, by, 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 by somebody. And you saw it again and again and again, Jesus saves. And I'm going, oh my God. Ah, oh, this passage comes to mind. Lord, Lord, why do you not do what I tell you? Right? Here we are. Jesus saves. And yet we are inciting violence. We are, um, we are promoting hatred. And, and, and I'm just like, oh, I am so angry at that person. And just, and I realize as I'm getting angry at that person and applying these words, Lord, Lord, why do you call me Lord, Lord, do, do not do what I tell you. I should also be going earlier into this reading and hearing Jesus say, why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Oh, yeah. Right. Not to say that the person with the Jesus save sign in the midst of an angry, violent mob um, is, is off the hook. But for me to simply say, well, that's what's wrong with, 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 with my faith. That's what's wrong with Christianity. Christianity would be great if it weren't for people like that. It, what that does is relieves me responsibility of looking at my faith, my relationship with God, but also what the what what Christianity actually offers, what my faith offers to to newcomers, to to others, I'm being I'm letting myself off the hook by saying, well, there's the bad one. So the reason we're not as good as we could be, the reason we're not connecting, is because of people like that. And Jesus is inviting me to go, yeah, okay, Norm. Well, what about you? What what do you got in your eye? Where are you using my name or using your faith? Uh, in a way that really is just about getting what you want. Not really about what I have preached to you, Norm. Not really about the good news of the kingdom of God. And I recognize that there are times that I do that. Um, I am not the only cleric who has probably managed to avoid a speeding ticket <clears throat> by wearing a clerical collar. Um, <laughs> Um, and we laugh about that and it's a silly example but it is one of those moments where I clearly I'm wearing a collar I'm saying Lord Lord but I'm not actually um, doing that uh, in the pursuit of what Jesus has taught me this is not about sharing the good news of the kingdom of God in fact this is just about me getting what I want or me avoiding taking responsibility for driving too quickly on the highway to be clear I haven't done that in well over a decade but Never mind. Um, 
this passage is meant for us to reflect on ourselves, I think. And, and, and again, that opening line, do not judge, you will not be judged, do not condemn, you will not be condemned. It's not about how we look at other people and say, you're terrible. It's how we look at ourselves and ask ourselves, so what are we doing? What are we doing when things are bad? What are we doing when we're unhappy? Uh, what are we doing when there are people that we consider to be the bad guys? What is our relationship to them? Jesus told us to love them. Yesterday's meditation. Um, so how are we doing that? Um, you know, are we scapegoating them? Are we just sort of imagining what well, all of our problems are your fault, and therefore not looking at ourselves for our responsibility? Or more than that, it's not about blame. It's like, but what can we do? What can we do to get from where we are to where we want to be? How can we become the beloved community? How can we li live up to that potential? How can we embrace that abundance that, that Jesus says is there for us? A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. How do we get there? Well, if we're to take Jesus seriously, at least the way Luke has given us Jesus' words, the one, I'll show you what someone who is, who, who, who is like, I'll show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. And when a flood arose, the river burst against that house but could not shake it. We're invited to take seriously what Jesus says. Right? These words spoken by Jesus are spoken before there is uh, before there is a crucifixion or a resurrection. This is Jesus being fully being the divine presence, fully in the human experience, right? But not showing by the example uh, uh, that that we find on the cross. But at this point, teaching uh, and acting in communities. So at this point we're told that, that, that there's where we can find our foundation. To do what Jesus says. To do what Jesus did. Remember? The one who goes and eats with tax collectors uh, and goes out to the margins. Uh, the one who tells us if somebody steals your coat, well then give them your shirt. Uh, the one who tells us not to judge and not to condemn, um, but in fact be the one of vision who can lead the blind so that you don't both fall into the pit. Be the one who's not afraid to look into your own eye and find that own your own speck or log or whatever may be there, even while trying to help your neighbor remove the log from theirs. Yeah, we're meant to not take our faith and use it to judge others. We're meant to take that our faith and use it to inspire ourselves to achieve more to move more deeply into relationship with God. At least that's what I'm thinking right now. And again, I've turned this into a sermon, but I'm going to stop apologizing that for that pretty soon because I'm a preacher. It's what I do. But I hope I've given you something to wonder about because I think that I'm pretty much coming to a close right now. So let me offer this prayer. Loving God, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to wonder Thank you for the promise that you are with us so that we need not be afraid when you challenge us, when you push us, when you reveal your word to us in ways that can be unsettling, in ways that can be humbling, even as they are uplifting. God, let us never be afraid to be open and vulnerable, honest with ourselves and with you. We pray through the Holy Spirit and in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, thank you for joining me today. Um, I look forward to checking in with you tomorrow when we'll move into chapter 7. But for now, please know that you are not alone. Who you are, what you do, it really matters and it affects people in ways that you can't even imagine. You matter. You are both blessed and a blessing. We'll see you tomorrow.